Hello, and welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money, and I'm your host, Michelle Graves, affectionately known throughout the United States as the Money Lady. I've been in the business of investments, insurance, real estate, banking, and international finance since 1976, and I'm always delighted to be able to come into your world and to talk to you about my favorite subject, which is money. M-O-N-E-Y. That is the spelling of that word. And today's segment, I am going to be talking about, for the next hour, young people, teenagers, people under the age of 18, who are horribly and inadequately equipped to face the world of money. So, for those of you that are listening, please encourage your young people to sit down and to listen to this show. It's imperative that if they don't listen, at least you listen, because it is my firm belief that the lack of knowledge about an area so vital to their future has been completely, completely passed over. And for some reason, and I don't know if it's just parents, don't understand how serious this is, or maybe you as parents and grandparents, since you didn't have any money, since you didn't have success, since you're struggling and scrounging around, that you feel that, well, I don't have time to spend with my children, family members, talking to them about success, wealth, money, prosperity, and all of these things. And for those of you on a religious note to say, well, Jesus will work it out, or many of the acronyms that go along with that, let me share something with you. That is not good enough. Without knowledge, which is God gave you a brain, now use it. Without knowledge, you will not have the information base to make wise decisions. And frankly, not, information is first. It pr creates a foundation for you to grow knowledge and then make wise decisions. Many, many of us have had little to no information about money, and therefore our decisions are bizarre. They just are. They're bizarre. The conclusions that we arrive at are bizarre because we don't have the information. Nobody has poured into us the information to allow us to make wise decisions. And if you are in a family, I don't have to tell you that your young people are looking at your decisions every day. And you don't want to know what their opinion is. For many of them, what their opinions are about the lives that so many of their parents and grandparents and family members have chosen. And so I have made a personal commitment. I did a, 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 an amazing seminar um, about money game, money rules, the power of money for young people for a remarkable organization in Cincinnati, Upward Bound. And um, I was just honored, privileged, delighted to be able to share my perspective with young people who are part of that program, an awesome program, by the way. And kudos to the executive director and Deborah Sellers as well, who extended to me that invitation and I was more than honored to be there. But I share this with you because that presentation uh, was powerful and it really gave me pause to think and to think long and hard about this subject of our young people. Young people are very dear to me. I love children, I love babies, I love pre-adolescents, I love young people. It doesn't bother me about their music, their culture, because, you know, I'm a baby boomer. And as I tell people, we were doing James Brown. Yeah, remember James Brown? Remember hot pants? Remember platform boots? Remember go-go boots? Remember mini skirts? Remember Donna Ross wigs? Remember the Vietnam protests? Remember the Black Panther Party? Remember Aunt Lyndon B. Johnson and the Great Society? Remember, remember, remember flower power, remember, come on people.
them to experience life in all of its dimensions and through proper guidance and training that's what parents do not schools parents that they're able to enter into their life well equipped to make good sound choices for their lives and as I look today many of them are making horrific choices because they have not gotten the proper mentoring and guiding and exposure that is so necessary today as we are in a global economy where their competition is headquartered all over the world. They've got kids all over the world. They're socially connected with Facebook, with Twitter, and a bunch of venues that allow them to connect with young people all over the world. And interestingly enough, there. I mean, in China, I saw young people imitating precisely hip hop and Michael Jackson. They were moonwalking and doing the same things that young people over here were doing. And, what, and I found it to be absolutely fascinating because again, it, share, it, it kind of reinforced in my mind that youth is a period in time that God has allocated where they have joy and exuberance and positivity and the world seems like a great big fat apple waiting to be eaten and enjoyed. And again, they're now confronted with some real harsh, severe realities. Many of them are in situations, and this is statistics, I'm not kidding you, where the majority of them are being raised by single parents, primarily female. This is white and black kids and uh, that are being, a lot of them have come through emotional abuse and scarring. A lot of them have had to raise their brothers and sisters because their parents are drug addicted and are barely functional and their grandparents are alcoholics. Oh, you don't think it's real? Well, it is real and it's happening right around us. So my commitment, my heart commitment is that we want to have a better place. We want our young people to step into a world that is a kinder, gentler place where they are very adroit at all the technical skills. Uh, they know how to do computers. They know how to do graphics. They're experts at Xbox and Game Boy, all those things. They're, they're very proficient at technology. But there has to be, for there to be balance, there has to be an equal proficiency in the necessary skill sets, emotionally, spiritually, Psychologically, those skill sets have to be intact as well. And a big part of that is understanding how systems work so that they can begin to leverage all of those giftedness that they have inherent and begin to play ball and win. Not just survive, but to thrive in the midst of challenges and difficulties and adversities. So I'm going to spend this show time talking to parents, grandparents, and young people because I know you all follow me, you watch me, you give me feedback, you talk to me, you drive me crazy sometimes. I'm like, give me a break, I'm too old for this. But I love you and you know I love you. You know my heart's with you and I know that God is with you. So on that note, let me start by opening up by saying to you that if I can change your thinking, or should I restate that? If you change your thinking, you will change your world. I don't care what your environment is, what you're going through right now, what your parents did or did not do, what you had materially or did not have. I don't care about any of that. I absolutely believe that if you can change your thinking, you can change your world. Because the Bible says very clearly that as a man thinketh, so is he. And these are not cute little scriptures. These are words from heaven to equip you and to enable you to not only sur survive, but to surpass. And that's what I want you to think about. What has to happen in your world for you to make a change in your thinking. And, 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 and again, I have to reiterate and stress before we deal with money, because money is really about a mastery game. It's more than just thinking about money, 
but it is about laying out your life and ordering your affairs as a young person that says, you know what, I'm serious about me. I need to do what I need to do to make sure that my choices are beneficial for me, that the outcomes of my life work for me, that I'm not stuck in a rut, that I'm not looking at everything at, from the dark side, and that I, because you know what, you can look at a cup as half full or half empty. It's all about your perspective on a thing. So my focus was, is, and will always be, is what's going on in your head. Listen, when I was in high school, Wanted Hills High School to be precise in Cincinnati, Ohio, a very prestigious college prep school. There was only a handful of African Americans at that time. And I had always been a geeky little kid, loved books, loved science, loved math. And can you imagine, I graduated in the top of my class, an achievement back then. And my high school counselor, a German lady, told me that I needed to learn how to uh, prepare myself to be a secretary, to type, because I was straight A's, I got excellent grades. And typing was easy. We all had to take high typing in home economics. Can you believe that? And I didn't want to do that because I wanted to be a scientist. That's really what I wanted to do. And for her, that was an absurdity, an absurdity. And she counseled many of the African-American students to become secretaries, to become um, office workers. That was what her view of us was. But that was not my view of me because I wanted to be a scientist. I knew I was real smart with math. I knew I knew how to handle money. That was a gift, but that's what I do. And so I made up in my mind after that was her report of me, that that was not me. And I made a decision to leave Cincinnati. And I did. At 17, I graduated with honors, and I got on an American Airlines jet with my parents' blessings and went east and pursued the things that were important for my growth and develop development. Now, I'm saying to all of you that if I can do it, I can assure you, you can do it because it's what's happening in your head. It's what's going on inside of here. It does not matter how other people see you. How do you see yourself? If I had believed her report, because back then, black women were secretaries and, and cleaned houses and, and polished furniture and did low-paying jobs. That was what the society at that time defined our contribution. And our, our men were likewise put in those kinds of slots. But again, if I can begin to impart into you a truth, a scriptural truth, that change your thinking, change your world. And if you can begin to embrace that, then I can take you to the next step, which is so important. And that is that money makes the world go round. Whether you like it or not, it does. And your money or lack of money is going to define how your world will move. So let's establish that as a truth. And let's not get into the politics of why it is that way. Money has been around since time eternal as a tool, as an instrument, as a measure of success, as a store of value. In the day, thousands of years ago, it was used for trade. And in fact, bank comes from a term that emerged out of Italy because all of the money changers uh, hovered on the banks of I've forgotten what river that is in Italy. But the purpose of the bank is if I had a cow and you had a chicken and I didn't want your chicken, but you wanted my cow, then what medium could I use to allow me to sell you a cow and for me to buy something else? 
And that's what money is. It's a tool. It's not something to be worshipped. It is something to be respected because everybody all over the world uses money as a venue for trade and for transaction. Well, those who've been able to exercise money carefully, and money does need to be exercised, okay, those that do exercise money carefully become successful. And then money becomes a measure of success. Because if you trade enough cows and you accumulate enough money, then you're able to use that money as a store of value to buy things. Now, as I share with people, money, young people, is not wealth. And I know this, you know, about this rain in money. I already know that. But what I'm talking to you about is how to rain a blizzard. <laughs> it's not about rain at a couple of dollars or hundreds, Benjamins. It's about psychologically establishing your mind so that you will begin to put into place, into motion, the moves and the steps that will allow you to experience a blizzard. Hey, get with that, hip-hop guys. Point being, don't worship money, okay? It's a tool. It's like looking at a tree and bowing in front of a tree and saying, oh, I love you, tree. That's not what money is about. Understanding how money moves and how money works will enable you to benefit through success. And surely, money cannot answer all things. That is the truth. But it answers most things, okay? Try not having any money, which is most of the world today. They don't have any money. And you can see what the lack of money will do because it automatically characterizes and categorizes you as a poor person, a person who does not have success, a person who was not able to manage their wealth or proper wealth properly. That's what money is. But money is not wealth. And please understand that money is not wealth. I've shared this over the years with many, many people. Wealth is the sum total of the person. Well, a person can be very, very wealthy uh, in terms of money, but if they haven't uh, completed the other side of the story, meaning with my, my money, I'm able to do more than just deal with me. Money gives you the freedom to be creative. Money gives you the freedom to help other people besides yourself. That's what this whole Occupy thing is about, which is why does 1% of this country, and for the record, the world, have everything, and nobody else has anything? And I say, well, they are money rich, but wealthy poor, because they have not really understood that money is a tool, and that when you have that kind of money, you have the, the resources, you have the measurable, tangible assets to allow you to bring change upon this planet and to eliminate suffering. That is major. That is major, young people. We have to make changes globally. It is not acceptable for most of the world to be hungry, particularly children and young people. The brain is developing without food you will have a nation of people that are mentally challenged and are limited in their abilities. So again, that's why I find the notion of a person having a lot of money, uh, it's inconsequential to me if they don't understand wealth, which is the creative capacity to put into motion the things that money can facilitate. The other measurement is that in other countries, most notably and most recently with Omar Gaddafi, wealth in other countries uh, has to do with owning people. Because when you are a king, you not only have all the money, but you also own the people. And I'm not talking about slaves, but chattel slaves as was the American, African American experience where we were subhuman. But I'm talking about in other countries where there's monarchies, where the people swear allegiance to the king and he owns the people. That's major. 
and that's considered human wealth because they now own people. I don't happen to believe that's a godly thing, but I will tell you that when you talk about wealth versus income, be clear that people that own people are incredibly richer than people that just have money. So please understand that wealth is an ability to leverage your money creatively. Wealthy people have more time to think and to dream and to know that they have the means to make that happen. Wouldn't you like to be able to just dream all kinds of things and know that you have no limitations for making it happen? That is truly what wealth is about. That is what it is about. It's about the ability to actualize all those dreams and to be able to execute through the venue called money whatever you want. Major, major. So we understand that money's a tool. Money does not answer all things. And be clear, if you're on an island and your boat has sank and you're a rich man with 50 boats at port someplace else waiting for you, but you're stuck with no money, is that your problem? Is money your problem? Or is a functional boat your problem? So please do not worry. Money cannot cure forms of cancer. Money cannot make you live forever. Money has limitations. Believe me, there are many, many rich people, and some own humans, <laughs> and they have a disease that's incurable, and all the money in the world cannot resolve their situation. Money cannot assure you an eternity of peace. It cannot. Sorry, there are many people that are rich, that have money, but sleep restless nights. Can't get to sleep. Insomniac, anxiety, worry, stress. Why? Because money has made them feel, and actually money didn't, their own what's going on in their head made them feel that they're gods. But you know what? Try to sleep when you're trying to run everything and trying to control everybody. Not a good way. So again, it's not that money has attributes that personally are good or bad. It's a tool. So I want you to understand that. And how you use it will literally set your destiny in motion. Young people hear me well. So let's talk about this thing called money. And the first thing I want to tell you is that it is a game. It is a money game. And like any game, you have to know the rules of engagement. It's kind of like Monopoly, which I love, by the way. I haven't played it in a long time, but I still liked it. I still like it. Play it again now. If you don't know a game and you don't know the rules, then the outcome is going to be not so good. It's kind of like football. And if you're looking at football, the football is what had better happen over the goalpost. All the players are lined up. You got your watchers, your game watchers, and then you got your game players and you got winners. And in the money game, winner takes all. Trump. Boom. You don't remember the losers from the Super Bowl. And you may remember watching it, but you don't remember your emotional content. And that is really the way money works. It is a game. It has rules. It has terms of engagement. It has lots of things that people that don't know it's a game, they can go through life thinking all kinds of things and not understanding that a game is being played right in front of their face, period. Your decision to watch this public access show, which I've consciously chosen, this venue, I don't want to be on commercial television right now. I've been there, done that. I already know what that's about. That's money for real. It's not money for you watching it. It's money for the people that own the station, the advertisers that pay to advertise their stuff on the station to alter your buy decisions to make them money. It's a game. They're, they're okay with the terms of engagement, but do you know the terms of engagement? When you sit down and watch television, Who's getting paid? Are you a game watcher, a game player, 
or a game winner. Game watchers get nothing. Game players, maybe. But game winners take it all. So, who gets paid the most at the Super Bowl? The winner does. Who gets paid most in, in, in basketball championships? The winner does. Who gets paid the most in the world of business? Whether it be Facebook with Mr. Zuckerman, a young man who's a billionaire, he gets paid because his money game worked. And I'm a Facebook user. And I know he's making a pile of money. And you know what? That's okay because this young man has a real clarity, a real clarity of what it's going to take for him to make it happen. That's called creativity and energy. He's young. He wasn't rich. He's rich now. But he had creativity on his side, and that's why I think that's a remarkable thing for him as a young person to step into that like that. Just remarkable. Let's talk about money rules. And I want you to sit here and, and really get this. This is why the playing field is truly level. It doesn't matter whether you come to the playing field with more money or not. Your family's rich, family's poor. It doesn't matter. It's all happening up here in your head. What can you create? What's inside of you that people don't even know about yet that can change the world? You can change the world, young people. Did you know that? You can change the world. My generation, we've had our time, our season. Most of us are retiring and bailing out because, you know, it's just what it is. You cannot run like a 20-year-old. I don't care how buffed out you are and how many juicers and how organically you eat. Your body is not going to look like a 20-year-old who's just getting started in life. That's not going to happen. But you all, your generation, if you're focused and disciplined and understand the money game, you can change the world. I am excited about the possibilities and the prospect if you're willing to change what's going on in your head. Okay? Step it. Now, money has rules, okay? Like every game. Can you imagine the quarterback running the ball for the wrong team? Would you say they have problems? Well, that's what happens when you play games and you don't understand that there are rules in terms of engagement. Like I said, there are winners, there are losers. Most people are not winners, okay? And money's not going to reward people that don't win. It's not, okay? Because remember, money is a measurement of success. It's not going to reward people that don't win. So let's talk about some of the money rules. And the biggest money rule for me, trumping everything else I've dealt with and taught over 36 years, is that time is money. How you spend your time is going to tell me whether you are broke or whether you are on your way to financial success. Why do I say that time is money? Because it is. In fact, uh, one of the young people I talked to a couple of weeks ago, awesome young man who is definitely on his way to success, Kobe L. Kobe Wilkerson, a young man out of Atlanta who writes books and is an educational consultant and a young person. Oh, he's so smart. Oh, he's so smart. He told me, Miss Graves, I take exception to what you say. I said, what? what? He said, no, time is more precious than money because time once spent can never be replaced. Money you can get again. And I told him, you are so right. People that waste their time, squander their time, don't respect their time, are people that have no money. Money is not going to show up in that situation. It's not. And if you as a young person allow other people to waste your time, spend your time, and you don't get anything in return from it other than, oh, those, those are my, those are my, my, my dudes. Those are, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. In 10 years, you won't even know these people. What are you doing with your time? You have 24 hours in a day. If you subtract out eight hours, you have a balance. And that time is open. So tracked out another uh, maybe six hours for school. And how much time do you have left? Don't forget your weekends and Sundays because that's, again, time. 
If everybody starts off every day with the same amount of time, whether they have money or not, everybody starts off with the same amount of time. So how much time are you wasting? Is your day ordered or is your day squandered? Do you spend most of your activities on socializing and doing what everybody else is doing? So you're not really a game player, you are a game watcher. The game is going on and you're watching it go by. Well again, that's a formula for poverty. It's coming, it's gonna look at you right in the face. I'm amazed at the amount of time people can spend in front of a television or on an Xbox playing a family game where you're warring against each other. Now I do respect everybody needs a little rest time or break time. But as I share with people, how in the world do you have that kind of time to waste? Really, unless you have stock in the companies, Microsoft, Net, uh, or somebody who's producing these commodities that people are using. How much of your idle time, and I say idle because it's not productive, not for you, it isn't. Well, I like doing it. Well, you know what? A lot of things in life are based upon emotions. But the thing about money, money is not an emotion. Money is a responder. Money will respond to your emotions. So if your days are spent doing nothing, they're not spent building your brain, they're not spent at the library, they're not spent reading books, they're not spent focusing on your gifts because you know what you do well. You're not spending time on those kinds of initiatives. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If you live this kind of a life as a young person, the prospects of you changing over time are going to be very, very, very bleak. So I need you to take a look at how you do your time and just write out every day how you're spending your time and you're going to find out that you're wasting a lot of time, which is frankly a bad, bad, bad formula for success. Time is money. And I will tell you, anybody that you allow in your space to waste your time is going to cost you money. Why? Because you could be doing something to make you money or lay the, laying the foundation for you to create some things that are going to create revenue streams for you on down the road. It's just what it is, okay? I, this is not a feel-good show. This is about the money ladies talking to young people that you all, I love you so much. I want so much out of all of you, Latinos, blacks, whites, male, female, gay, straight. I don't care. I love young people because this world is your inheritance. And if things don't change soon, it's going to be scary. It simply is. And frankly, many of you, your parents didn't tell you anything. But I'm telling you, the truth. And I'm not cutting, cutting back. I'm not backing down. I'm just telling you the truth. So time is money. Don't allow other people to waste your time. Don't let other people empower you in that way. Or I should call it disempower you because when you let them in your space and they're not talking about anything, they're officially wasting your time. And that begins to add up. One young man said to me, I would like to be a billionaire. And I asked him, I said, do you know how many years it, it, it takes to count one billion numerically? And he did not know. And I said, it takes 96 years. They've actually documented. I said, now, if you're prepared to invest 96 years into saying, counting all the numbers to aggregate to a billion dollars, I said, then you're on your way creatively to doing something amazing. And he stopped because that was a shock because he didn't expect it. But like I tell people, I don't want you to fantasize. I want you to dream dreams that become real for you. I'm not interested in you babbling on about, I want to be like this sports scar or this hip hopper. I want you to do you. I want you to be you because you are the very best that God created for you. Nobody else can do you. Nobody else can be you. Nobody else can think like you. So I want to see that creative capacity codified into the term called financial success. So we know time is money. Let's talk about another money rule. And that is money will no, never show up and stay on the steps of a fool. Sorry. 
Money does not respect stupidity. Money does not re reward bad decisions. Money certainly does not show up when you've made a miserable choice. Now I'm going to say something that's going to upset a lot of you, particularly you females. It has been my experience as a female, because I'm certainly not a male, but the notion of being financially successful and having children on your own is not workable. And that may come as a shock for you, but the truth of the matter is statistically, single mothers raising children do not have money. Now, a lot of that has to do with, again, children are expensive. $100,000 to raise a child to adulthood. Say, so you're kidding me. Right, children are expensive. To give them the lifestyle that you would want your child to have is expensive. And people say, well, you know, money lady, you were a single woman. I said I was divorced and it was hell. Yeah, I did say it. It was not easy. I tell women, you cannot possibly want to do this and expect to get to the level of success that you would need to be able to educate and empower your children. And do remember that children are watching everything. That's why I'm doing this show. Because children watch everything that happens in the home. They see their mothers coming in tired. They see their mothers coming in weary. They see there's not enough food. They see their mothers worried about rent and how to buy shoes, and simple things, survival things, food, clothing, shelter. Children grow up in that environment when they are poor. They don't have... Cause, and I love babies. They're so cute. Oh my gosh. But I don't have to raise them. I already did that. And I know it's very expensive. And it takes a lot of emotional energy. And you know what? You're going to look back and you're going to say, God, how did this happen? And I'm saying to you as a young person, just don't do it. If you have a child, just be prepared for a long road. You're going to need all the help you can get from your parents, from your church. Oh, yeah, you would better get a church because you're going to need community. You're going to need people that are going to love your children and hang in with your children. Oh, yes, you are because you can't do it all. You're going to need male figures. You're going to need honorable men to mentor your children so that they will grow up into responsible world citizens willing to contribute. You're going to need those things. You're going to need Sunday school. Yes, you are. Oh, yeah? Okay? I said it. It's out there. Same thing for young males. Check your stuff. You don't want to make those choices. You don't want to bring children into the world that you cannot take care of. I raised my children that way. Don't have children that you cannot take care of because children are expensive and you have to be willing and mature to not just take care of them financially, but to mentor them as success models. I share with people all the time, adults come home, oh, I hate my job, I hate my job, I can't stand my boss. And I said, your children are sitting there listening to all of that. And then you want to know why you can't get them out of your house? Well, what person's going to want to leave the safety and comfort of home to go into the work world when you've already told them for 18 years you hate your job? Those are the kinds of subliminal messages that you have to be watchful of and careful of because it does have an impact because children absorb everything like a sponge. They don't know right from wrong. They only know what they hear and are exposed to. So again, those are, those are choices and that gets into the money rule. Money is intentional. Money will not show up where money is not respected, money is not honored, and money is not handled properly. It won't show up. It's intentional. When you make up your mind that I'm going to order my steps in a disciplined way, I'm going to stop operating like I'm in Fantasy Farm, 
waiting to buy the next pair of gym shoes, when I'm going to stop worshiping and admiring other humans and begin to admire what God has given me internally, then you can expect for great things to come out of this little noggin called your brain, which, by the way, we only use 10% of our brain. That's a, that's a sad stat. 10%. What about the 90%? That's for another show. But I'd like you, I would like you to focus on the creative things in you that will make money show up. And money will probably show up in the form of other people. Money does not show up as Chris Benjamins or dollars or a hundred. Money shows up in the form of other people who can help you and facilitate your agenda. You say, I want to become an architect. And this was a question I asked. If you want to be an architect, have you developed relationships with architects? Well, what would they do? Well, you'd be surprised. You'll never know until you knock on some doors and ask if you could just watch and learn. That's how it happens. Money shows up through other people. It does not show up from manna from heaven. It shows up through other people. Say you want to be a writer. Network into writer guilds and learn about writing. Perfect your craft. There are publishing companies. That's not the venue today for many, but there are writers all over the place. So hone in your skills in writing. Begin If you want to be a photographer, take pictures everywhere and learn from the best. Always go to the best. That's why I share with people, I consider myself one of the best in my game, which is money. I tell folks, I, I've been a craft in my game for 40-something years. I'm supposed to be good. I am, if, if nothing more but by repetition. <laughs> I'm supposed to know something, all right? But I've been blessed. That's my creative capacity. I've been blessed in the area of biochemistry. I love how things work scientifically. I love math. That's just the way God wired me. That's what I do. Doesn't mean that's what you do. But whatever you do, become a master at your craft. And you cannot become a master so that money can show up through people if you're wasting time with people that are not going anywhere. And let me tell you another money rule. And that is money responds to risk. If you never take a risk in life, I can assure you, that the outcome of your story is going to be a little sad. Money likes risk. This is why when you look at corporations, somebody had a creative idea and somebody was willing to take a risk to do it. It just didn't happen. There is a misnomer that rich people just got rich. Well, that may be their children, but the person that birthed that idea work very, very hard. When you look at Walmart today and the founder of Walmart, he worked for years with his idea. And after 40-something years, can you imagine 40-something years, he hits it big. And that's interpreted. I believe the man went to his grave working, working every day and trying to make his dream a reality for so many people. So it has to start some way, somewhere, and again, it has to start with you. Now, my challenge to you, and I can talk about more money rules, which is money will not show up if you don't respect it. Money's like a kept woman. If you don't do her right, she's going to leave you. Yeah, money is truly not the root of evil. It is the love of money. Money is not evil. The love of money, where you covet it, where you can't function without it. Now, that's evil. But please, anybody that says to me money is evil, I'm going to tell you, you need to get your scriptures right because it is the love. And many people love that thing. I don't understand why they like to worship a tree. Like I said, money's made from a tree. I'm like, oh, you're into tree worshiping? I don't do trees. It's nice to look at, but I'm certainly not going to bow in front of one. So my word of encouragement to you as young people listening today is to take stock of where you are today. Look at the decisions you've made. Look at your environment. Look at the life path you want for yourself. You're always free to change up. And oh, wait a minute, let me give you another money rule. Failure is okay. Multiple failures are a part of living out life. 
but do not abandon that thing in you that's driving you to do that. So you say, I have an idea, but nobody's for me. And I will tell you that most people, look at Abraham Lincoln and his story, look at most inventors and their story, full of rejection, full of rejection, because money wants you to work. You got to work. You got to work it. You got to work it for it to show up. How much do you want it? And then how willing are you to work long and hard and disciplined and focused to make it happen? Okay? I'm just sharing with you. We live in an amazing country. We live in an amazing world. And we serve an amazing God who is not limited and has given all human beings creative capacity. Every day, new ideas, new concepts, new dreams, new opportunities, new interfaces, all of that in your head. But if you choose to be negative, money will not show up. Oh, t sorry. Money does not flow with that. Money wants you to be uh, engaging, which is I just welcome the opportunity to do something tremendous and great today. And you can tell your friends, and I don't have time to talk with you because I really got to work me. You know, y'all got to really do this for me because it's important that I live out what I have been set to do. That's very important as we move ahead. So, what is your challenge? What is keeping you from doing you? What is keeping you from stepping into the dimension of greatness that is our right as human beings? What distinguishes your world of no's from my world of yeses? Because as I tell people, my response today is yes and yes. It's not a yes and no, it's a yes and yes. I don't like to be around people who are always on the no side. Because as I tell them, while you're saying no, I hope you know that your no's are setting you up for no. Money says, no way. So, the engaging in the conversation, the dialogue that says, I am fully equipped to master whatever I set my mind and my energies to, is awesome. It does not matter what your family background is. All of us, all human beings, hear me, all human beings, have crazy families. Yep, God's got a sense of humor. <laughs> he does, because in every family, you're gonna find diversity, you're gonna find opinions, and you're just gonna say, man, are we nuts? And the answer is, yeah, and so what? That's what makes life interesting. Are you willing to roll with what you got and make it happen? Are you willing to sit on the sidelines and criticize point fingers? Are you willing to say, you know what? I'm in this game and I'm in this game to win. I'm not in this game to be a participant and have a nice day. I'm really engaged in this, 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 this thing called money. And I'm gonna make it happen for me because there are too many things I need money to do for me and for other people. This is so very important. Money is a tool. Money needs a venue. Money is not controlled by one person. And let me tell you something, you cannot take money with you because I have yet to attend a funeral where a hearse was backed up to a bank <laughs> with a tow chain on it. You cannot take money with you. When the game is over, young people, you will die. That is an absolute guaranteed truth. They have not mastered eternal life on earth in a human body. Doesn't happen. Finite amount of time to do some things. And my encouragement to all of you is to make that happen and make it happen big. Why do little when you can be big? And for those of you that are adults, let me give you a word. Let me pat, pat, snap your hands. 
because many of you have been guilty of cutting them down, talking about them, spewing negativity, speaking against their person. Then I can say to people, I don't like your behavior. And as your mother, I'm going to deal with that. And I did. Trust me. But you don't have, you don't have the right to condemn a child, which is, you can say, I don't like what you did, but you don't have the right to say, I don't like you, or you're stupid, or you're never going to amount to anything. You don't have the authority to cut a person's soul by your words and by your actions. Because the truth of the matter is this, and that is every child comes to this world innocent, innocent and joyous. I mean, you, if you, they come with an expectation and things change because if the environment is never affirming and conducive but always full of adult drama, children cannot handle that. It begins to crush the soul. It begins to limit their ability to think and to create. And their spontaneity, which makes them so much fun to be around, it, it just makes them so much fun to have fun with. But believe me, many of you that are watching today, and don't throw, don't, don't throw a pop ball at the television, because I'm just going to keep it real. Many of you, by your actions and reactions, have told your children that they are no people. They are no bodies, N-O, bodies. That's the lie. And many of them will spend their lifetimes trying to get that all worked out. And I am just encouraging those of you that have done that, you need to go to your children and apologize to them and tell them, you know what? I am blessed to be in a country where I have a job. I am blessed to be in a place where I have the freedom to vote, where I have the freedom to choose what I want to eat, where I want to shop, where I want to live. That's America. If you want to really experience challenges, there are countries right now that you can get on a plane and you will say, I cannot even believe this is happening. They don't care about you. They don't care about anything. It's strictly a predatory uh, country. That's not America. America, and we have challenges, and, and it's not all right, and a lot of stuff is wrong, but this is what I love about our country, and that is we are a land that supports and endorses creativity, supports and endorses the power to walk out one's purpose and destiny with very little resistance. Right. But I caution by saying to all of you as parents, keep that in mind. Check yourself. Be careful of the message you send to your young people. And young people, let me share this with you. As I told my children, nobody gave me a script on parenting. I love Dr. Seuss. Okay, <laughs> the cat in the hat. Okay, nobody told me this. Okay, forgive your parents if they messed up on things. Be open to recognizing that they were probably a product of somebody else's garbage. And they only trained and taught what they knew. And make a commitment that that's not going to be what you're going to do or be. Make a commitment that you will live your life differently, that your children will have a better opportunity, that you will not allow yourself to be dragged through anything. And always remember, yes, and yes, and that it all begins with what's going on in your head. Just remember that. Change your thinking. Change your world. That is my earnest desire for all of you, that you can begin to step into the unlimited capacity of thinking and creating. There's an excellent book out, by the way, called Imagine. And I encourage everyone that's watching this to get that book. Amazon it, but get that book. Because it talks about creativity. It talks about conceiving. And this is what I've said all along. 
I said, gosh, your mind is priceless. Cherish it. Don't fill it up with negatives and toxics. Stay away from people that are like that. They're costing you money. They're going nowhere. And commit to live your world expansively, abundantly, having love and compassion for everybody because we're all human beings and everybody's trying to get through the day. And that's the truth. So I sign off today's segment of The Power of Money for Teens with, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope it gave you food for thought, meat for action. And as always, I love you dearly. I am Michelle Graves, the money lady, and God bless you today.